The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called a crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, good to be with you again. We continue in the Gospel of St. Mark. And in today's Gospel reading, we actually have kind of three points that are kind of put together. We hear that Jesus went to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? And of course, the people are not sure exactly who Jesus is. Perhaps he is a reincarnation of John the Baptist, because John the Baptist was a mighty prophet. Perhaps he is, as others believe, uh, Elijah, another wonderful prophet of the Old Testament. And some people, of course, are undecided, but they know he's a man of God, and so they say he's one of the prophets. Let's cover all the bases. He could be any of them, but we don't really know. To this answer, Jesus asks his own disciples, who've been with him from the start, but who do you say that I am? And, of course, only one of his disciples pipes up, and it's Peter. And Peter says, quite short and brief, you are the Messiah. And with this, Jesus orders his disciples not to tell anyone about, about him. He knows at least his disciples know what his identity is. Even 2,000 years after the fact, there are people who continue to wonder about Jesus' identity. They are not satisfied with our gospel accounts. And so, is he a magician? Is he a wise man? Who exactly is he? And so, it's curious, 2,000 years later, there are people who still wonder who is this Jesus, this one who uh, is born in Bethlehem, shares God's word, dies upon the cross, rises from the dead? Who is he really? Jesus begins to teach his disciples, as any good teacher would, what's going to happen to him. Now, I think his disciples probably thought he was going to go to Jerusalem, and there, there would be uh, certainly a, a great theophany. The heavens might open up, and the angels would come down from heaven, and they would throw out all the wicked people and the Romans, and Jerusalem would become kind of a capital for um, a holy and glorious Jeru uh, Israel. And so that's what they're hoping for. But Jesus uh, kind of breaks their hearts by telling him that he must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, be killed, and after three days rise again. Guess who says something? The same guy that said something a few moments ago, Peter, rebukes Jesus, 
We don't know exactly what Peter said, but it probably was something like, no, no, this, this cannot happen to you, Lord. You, you're the Messiah. You're the one we've been waiting for. You're going to cast out our enemies. You're going to begin a reign of justice and peace. Or something like that. To this, Jesus says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Or in another words, you are, you are acting just as Satan wants you to act. He says, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Peter, in his own human mind, has a, an idea of how God will work things out. God, of course, has a different plan. One that will not only benefit his disciples and the nation of Israel, but one will benefit all of humankind. What follows is Jesus telling his disciples something that I'm sure also made them uncomfortable. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. And he goes on at length to explain what he's saying to them. It's hard to imagine how the people of Jesus' day understood this business of taking up your cross. The cross was a terrible way to die. It was incredibly painful. It took several days. It was shameful in the sense that one was stripped uh, either naked or nearly naked and nailed publicly to, uh, to wood to die either from exposure or from uh, hunger or thirst or some other bodily ill. So for Jesus to say anyone who wants to follow him should deny themselves and take up their cross, I'm sure the crowd scattered kind of after that because it's not what people want to hear. Um, instead, Jesus tells the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the language that it's used in today's gospel, I think, while it's somewhat helpful, I'm going to kind of give you another version of that same language that Jesus shared with his disciples and with the crowd. Another way of understanding it would be like this. Jesus called the crowd and his followers and said to them, if you want to follow me, you need to stop thinking only about yourself. Be ready to carry your cross, for you will face enormous challenges for my sake. If you try to hold on to your life and what you think is important, you will lose everything. But if you give up your life and what you think is important for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, everything will be yours. For what does it matter if you gain the whole world, that you lose your eternal soul? Indeed, how will you purchase what you have so foolishly lost. Jesus concludes in words that are similar to these, many people are ashamed of me and of my teachings in this sinful and corrupt world. When I come into my Father's glory with the holy angels at the end of days, I will surely be ashamed of them. These are not words which are meant to draw people to Jesus, but rather to make sure they know the cost of discipleship. One of the wonderful things about Jesus is that Jesus speaks the truth, whether we're ready for it or not. And there were a lot of disciples who kind of thought following Jesus would be much like following a celebrity. Wherever he goes, I'll go. I'm part of his entourage. Things will go well. You know, well, that's not what Jesus is telling his disciples. Things will go badly for me, Jesus tells his disciples. But you know what? Things will go badly for you as well. And if you're not prepared for that, well, that's a terrible thing. The good news is if you follow me, ultimately you'll be successful. You'll win a great prize, not here on earth, but in heaven itself. Those words are still true for us today. You know, you don't have to follow Jesus if you don't want to. You can follow a lot of other people. There are a lot of other people that are looking for followers. There are a lot of people who are who are hungering to have a lot of people as their entourage, you know. But there's only one person I know that can promise you eternal life. And he's someone that I take seriously. And his words, they sound in my heart. I mean, when, when I see Jesus' words, there's something about what Jesus says that kind of rings true to me. And so I'm encouraging you, as difficult as it may be, to follow in the path of Jesus. And when you falter, and you will falter because all of his followers falter at times. Heavens, Peter faltered on a number of occasions and Jesus continued to love him and help him get back on the path. 
When you falter, ask for forgiveness, and God will forgive you. You'll have a new chance and a new opportunity to start again. May God bless you as you hear the scripture. May God strengthen you in your faith. May God help you to follow in the path of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go now in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.